Well, oh boy. Things and stuff. Things and stuff, let me tell you. Oh boy. So first of all, something you're already noticing is that there's new things. For example, we have this holographic cat, which probably took us another second to actually realize. Unless if you knew it was coming. We also have this feline dispersing resonator. This basically takes the piss out of cats. <laughs> like, if you look here... Cat repulsion. Cat is annoyed by your feline dispersing resonator. It is considering going on vacation until local house vitality improves. <laughs> That's just freaking awesome. <laughs> And that basically affects all the cats. But there is undoubtedly more going on here. Before I actually show what's over that way, let's just take a look at what's new over this way. Cat Manders. Blue and the yellow, they're just charging in and fighting with a bunch of other kittens and things. Now, I have checked through their like animations and that, and their buffs and their little um, cycles. They don't go through any new buffs throughout the whole animation periods of when it cycles over. They just take a certain amount of time before they actually go back at it. And you'll see when they actually do the charge, they have like a little countdown. Though it won't actually show as numbers, I don't think. It'll just be like a little bleeping light like that. And I think that's partially because, like, um, an actual world versus world scenario of, like, a commander tag moving in. They usually have like a bunch of buffs being placed over them as they stack on each other. Now stacking for like players is when they all group up in one location. Because that makes it easier to buff up majority of the group. To get them all as prepared as possible to move in and kill everything in front of them as they march up. Now something else I've noticed is that Mox here has bit different, um, I'm pretty sure this is slightly different. Like I'm pretty sure before he would mention that they were a lot more active when I'm here specifically. I could be mistaken, but I think that's the case. But yeah, the amount of new cat stuff is very quite entertaining. Now let's talk about what <laughs> this really deserves talking about. For starters, we have this um, hollow scepter thing. Now uh, this bit's supposed to like basically cause buffs and stuff over cats. Like this <laughs> lady with scary uh, whiskington. If I do this over it, it will go into enraged. I wish I had hair like a safari. Although you'll notice it doesn't actually do anything at the time being, and like anything else. But if I do the two skill, holographic target, it sets a marker that attracts a cat's attention, to sort of attack it. And Lady Whisk, <laughs> yeah, Whisking Ted basically breathes fire upon it, which is absolutely awesome. But, um, other cats, they'll just sort of go in for a pounce. Even the Snow Leopard Cub will.
we still have these cats here brawling. And they'll be attracted at this target. They don't seem to be affected by the one skill of this at all. So that part's a bit eh. But at the very least, most of the cats seem quite affected by the two skill. Where they'll pay attention to the little target setup. Assuming they're not in like a cooldown period or something. But let's get to my favorite part about all of this little cat business. So, the water pistol is quite entertaining. Like, where's the snow leopard cat right now? Like, this water pistol is the best part, easily. You know, besides the cat manders fighting, fighting each other. He's over there! After him! Where is he? War can't last forever. I just saw him. Come on, where are you? At least I thought I'd seen him rushing over this way. There he is. Watch this. Frozen. And he's also in torment. Now let's read this carefully. Anti feline water burst. Launches water at cats or cat-like animals to strike fear into their hearts. <laughs> we are given the ability to strike fear in the hearts of cats. And for some reason the water gun basically freezes the snow leopard. I haven't figured out if it's possible to get him out of that or not. I wonder if it's possible if I place this in the right kind of spot, if using the ground targeting thing for the other cats to pounce would somehow break them out. But I guess that's an experiment for another time. I guess let's demonstrate this on a few other cats. Now I can already feel it, people probably want me to do it to the Lady Whisk. Area. Just a moment for that one. Yeah, as you can see, it takes effect like an AoE, and not just hits one cat, but any cat within the little area of that. And basically, it just makes them kind of flee. Next, let's do this right at the Catmander area. Oh, but before the Catmander, let's actually do the Ghost Cat. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. He reacts to the water, but he doesn't actually do too much. He's like, ah, water. Oh wait, I'm a ghost. Like, that's his reaction, basically. In this case scenario, it scares all the kittens away, but the cat manders have, like, no effect from it. So yeah, in some amount, that is kind of saddening. Let's see. These cats... It just has the typical drive away effect of it, assuming I'm actually hitting them. I think I'm hitting the curb for some reason. Yep. Let's see, holographic kitten, also affected by it. The holographic kitten, you actually have to just straight up buy with a gold. 
Like, there's a cat-themed Azura in Radasum. Yeah, you could buy this kitten from them, and you can also buy all this cat stuff from them. I was so entertained and happy about that. Yeah, it was quite a nice stockpiling staples was the right call. Hour or two. <laughs> but now for the moment we've all been waiting for. Lady Wiskeria Whiskington. This is gonna be awesome. I like that. It's just going berserk. It's got like a CC bar, bloodstone infused shield, enraged. But you're about to see something interesting. I'm surprised it hasn't done the other thing just yet. Ow. It can basically, like, condi my health, probably, with a laser beam. Oh! Oh, 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 run, run, run! Fly, you fool! Ugh. Look at that radius! And... <laughs> that can actually kill the player, actually. That's like the hilarious thing. And now he's taking... She's taking a cat nap. Rest in peace. Scumbag. <laughs> but yeah, that's just really awesome that they included this. I wonder if this was like a long-term idea, just being worked on slowly by the cases and scenarios, or if this was just like an idea that came up like, can I please have this? And they, the rest of people at ANET were like, why not? It'll keep the players happy. Well, thank you for doing that. <laughs> I must say, that was probably one of the nicest little laughs I've had in a little while. Like, that was quite delightful, I must say. <laughs> but yeah, that cat is basically unconscious until I come back into my home instance. Like, if say I exit to Divinity's region, just immediately jump back in here. They'll be back up and operational. So yeah, pretty cool. But um, I'm sure some of you are probably wondering, where did you get the Cat Manders? So in actuality, those actually came from World vs. World. There is some secret places you can find those at. And... You can actually buy the minis for the Catmanders as well. Let's see. Miniatures. I have at least one of the minis. Because I didn't want to... Actually, I couldn't really afford the other one. But yeah, I have the blue mini Catmander. It's got the little commander tag over its head. So cool. When I grow up, I'm going to be a brave hero. But yeah, I also actually have um Can you ask Melandra to watch over them? Of course. We can't cook it. Oh, I can't do it here. Hang on. But yeah, I also have Catmander tag. And they come in in all the same colors as the original commander tags, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I very much enjoy that. While I'm waiting in a queue, let me tell ya, I was quite horrified recently that I had recorded all of the new uh, class elite specializations recently during the little demo bit. 
and basically my audio <laughs> external input it was for some reason disabled in the recording program I'm using. Not sure if I bumped that on accident or if it just happened on its own, but yeah, all the videos I recorded didn't have my mic audio. And by the time I realized it, I was just horrified. So yeah, some of you probably have seen those videos. I think um, one of them was actually thumb, like thumbs up for some reason, and I'm just like. I didn't even get to talk in those, apparently. Like, I discussed so much in those videos. Just to realize it, like, way later. That none of my voice was actually caught on them. Like, I talked about how, um... Like, how Renegade was, like, lots of trick shots, and... Seemed to have a lot of Kundi po potency for a focus, but, um, as I know, uh, apparently I'm on my way to the Alpine Borderlands, but, um, yeah, apparently, like, some people say it's still pretty decent for power build, and, like, I was actually kind of, like, trying it out, <laughs> like, I know I'm probably not the best person to actually try to use a Kani build because like trying to focus stacks isn't exactly a specialty of mine so it doesn't surprise me if I can't really do that as well as I could have yeah let's take a gander at where I would need to go to so basically the um cat mander is at the jumping puzzle like right around here basically now for some reason in the desert borderlands people call that a jumping puzzle also but it's literally like two jumps in my opinion that doesn't deserve being called a jumping puzzle I can respect people Wanting to call it that by the difficulty of the jumps. Like, it's a very difficult kind of jump to actually make and f find. But, um, I'm gonna try to sneak on by through World vs. World. And I'll get back to you when I'm at the necessary location. So, I'm pretty close to the Promised Lands. I should be able to get the rest of the way with a little incident. This is most of the sneaking I actually needed to accomplish. As for my route, I am not going to tell. <laughs> But, um, I might have had the diversion of a Zerg at the time being. But, um, how you want to go about this, you want up on top of this ledge. Now, this looks tempting and alluring, but this looks better. Especially if you know it's supposed to be a jumping puzzle you're going inside of. Now, at first glance, you probably really want to go at the big one, but in actuality, you want this little, um, archy crevice here. You are much more guaranteed to make. And end goal for the Catamander tag would be down in that, basically. Specific method? I actually have to double check myself with how to go about. But yeah, you jump to this platform. And at the very least, you do want underneath here and up on top of this. Now, let's see. I believe it's close to immediately. Yes, it is. 
and you can jump the rest of the way in so easily and you are in a room full of cats cats training to kill they're training to kill and there's this child what is this child but more importantly there's a cat mandarin right here the blue cat mandarin in fact now if you have I forget specifically which cat manner this was, but I think this one was the um, one that took the gift of battle, which is the legendary gift item that looks like a battle axe that you can only get from world versus world reward tracks. Like, um, yeah, gift of battle come specifically from this and that is how <laughs> once you have that in hand and um, bring it to him you'll get a another option I'll say he seems to be interested in my gift of battle and you can give that to him and he will be your friggin friend and if I'm not mistaken the other cats required some kind of fiery chili meat, the canned from the um, portable provisioner. Like it's um, a little more down a little bit. The spicy meat chili, I believe it was. It's a little difficult to confuse it because there isn't much chili at all in this. And I specifically recalling it being a meat chili and spicy and canned. So yeah, a little difficult to mess that up at all. So it would be either one or the other for the two cats, if I somehow butchered that up and which requires which. So just basically have one or the other in hand and then bring the other thing to the other. If I did mess that up by chance. This cat's like... Either trying to go through this, swim, or it's dancing. Party on, brother. Yeah, this is a nice little room. I recall someone mentioning about this room. Like, through Twitter, but I never actually got to here before. I wonder how they actually found this. While I'm in a queue again, something else worth mentioning is that um, for the minis, you need a hundred of the skirmish claim tickets. But um, for the cat commander tag, which you get from this also, if you ha already have commander tag for like 300 gold, it's usually worth in like uh, regular merchants. Then you can basically get the cat commander tag for 150 gold. But, um, if you don't already have commander tag, it'll be 300 gold for the cat commander tag, and you're basically getting the, um, the commander tag with the cat commander tag in a bundle, I think, is how it works. So yeah, that's pretty cool. But, um, I essentially got it the more expensive way by default. <laughs> So the other Catmander tag is in Red Borderlands. The Desert Borderlands more particularly. And it is located in this area over here by the Northwest Tower. Now what's convenient about this is that Tarnished Coast currently has Red Borderlands, so it's going to be easier to travel for me personally. Oh, I should also, um, I don't think I've actually shown this on video, but if you jump outwards, you fall flat on your face. But if you jump going in, you do not fall on your face. It is the exact opposite of that. Which I personally think is quite hilarious.
FBI, even if we do not own this tower right now, it is quite easy for me to get to where I need to go to from here. As long as I don't go tickling this place, I don't think I should have any problems. Just like pull out a feather and like harass the walls with it. It'd be impressive if it actually does anything, but <laughs> you know. We're already almost there. This hill is quite important because it's the way there. And a great sign to know you're on the right track is if you're seeing warthogs. And down below by the water, there's like bears. But um, where we're going here is towards the waterfall. And we need it in an approach from higher up because the entrance is hidden the same way as that other one. But instead of vines, we're challenged with a waterfall. The route might be ever so slightly less obvious. But, um, basically, we want to jump down and stick to the left side of the waterfall. And that wasn't very jumped down at all. And I missed it, apparently. But, um, yeah, if you pay attention, there's like a rock ledge right there. That's exactly what we need. And the fact that the rock ledge occupies so much of the left side, that makes it much easier of a target to go after. And since it's so well marked with a waterfall as practically its edge, that makes it significantly easier to sort of um, target it versus the vine situation and hope you just fall into the correct place. So it's definitely less problematic in its own right. But of course, you're still trying to get a target that you can't really see and you can't really target too well. Or at the very least, if you're trying to target it, you're going to have a limited form of going after it. Like, it's very evidently there, and underneath some shrubbery, but, um, that's only so obvious. Like, the real best hint is the waterfall and knowing it's on the left side. That is, like, the only way to really go after it. Okay, this time I made it, but my approach was from a little bit higher up, and like a bit of, like, a turn jump. But as you can see, kind of like jump up carefully ish and like a little more determined determined like and once we're in here first thing we see is a bunch of quaggins specifically quaggin hatchlings Hi there. and this place is adorable as hell like let me just show you how adorable it is there's cats about. There's like a puppet show thing. There's a little quaggin hatchling ghost. Like this is like quaggin raising territory just about. Like they have a television and like a story area and stuff. What is this? <laughs> Yeah, it's like, clearly they were having fun making this. There's like a little pirate. This guy's treasure and stuff. There's not really anything down here. Besides water and lights. But, um... Over here... Is where the other cat mander is. Got our yellow cat mander. 
and if you like have the thing he needs and you don't have him yet, this is exactly where you would um like there would be another option to show up to offer him. I'm pretty sure it's the chili, and ultimately that will allow him into your home instance and again he will offer the cat miner tag purchase as well as his mini I do not have the skirmish claim tickets for him so unfortunately I can't get him yet my cat collection isn't complete on a side note he appears to be in a giant sandbox or I guess to him it would be like a litter box but um I don't know so yeah that was a lot of crazy random cat stuff. It's very entertaining and it certainly keeps you yeah, interested in doing a number of things just for the huh? silly more of stuff. I want to say that's a good practice actually. Because so it definitely keeps me busy and it also keeps me quite entertained. Oh, also um... There's this. It's basically the Hollow Scepter toy for the cats, like in the home instance. Only you can skin a scepter with it, which is pretty cool in my opinion. <laughs> and ultimately, I think I'm eventually going to make a cat character. We'll see how that goes, but that's so far the plan. Exactly what class in that, I'll oh, have to see. Something else new I got going on is I've been making the spinal blades. Like, I've made the standard tempered spinal blades. They were ascended. Then I made the static tempered spinal blades and infused them. Pretty cool. Kind of reminds me of like um, a spider, kind of. But um, there's also blue ones and I believe green ones. The original of the spinal blades, um, <coughs> of the tempered spinal blade te skin. The tempered spinal blades are kind of like an orange, gold, yellow sort of color. But um, this is how they start off as. It's just a regular pack. Then it becomes the um, twin spinal blades. Then it becomes the quad. Then it becomes the advanced. And then finally the tempered. And the tempered can only just change colors <laughs> instead of growing more of these little spinal blades and that. But even then, it's still pretty cool, in my opinion. It just takes certain kinds of gear for it to look alright with. Especially with the limited amounts of colors we have for it. Let's see. I guess that's realistically... Just about it, besides me also getting my hands on this um, holographic Shattered Dragon's Wings. Now, there isn't exactly any um, glider set for that yet. I don't know if there ever will be. But either way, it's still pretty cool looking. But uh, yeah, I guess that'll do for now. Thank you so much for watching. I am 41 Solstice 25, Winter Solstice 8, and you have yourselves a fantastic day. Bye bye.